welcome back to the channel of Ecoholics. So I'm doing the part two of input-output model. So in input-output model, I help you to derive the equation, the final equation with the help of which you can find out the gross output of the industries. If you wish to see that video, please go to the link in the description box below. All right. So in that video, we learned how to get the output of various industries which are dependent on each other. But the thing is, the answers which we are getting, are they even consistent? Are they even viable? Because in production, there are a lot of constraints which have to be satisfied to get that output. So Hawkins-Simon conditions are those two conditions which ensure that the answers you have got, they are viable according to the production process. So Hawkins-Simon conditions are for two sector model where we just have two industries which are dependent on each other. So we are going to understand those two conditions in today's video. All right. So this was the I minus A matrix, which we derived in the input output video. So I have taken it directly. Now, the first condition says that the diagonal elements of your I minus A matrix should be positive. So if I'm writing this as positive, I would get A11 less than 1 and A22 less than 1. So what is the implication of them? Now, what do we understand with A11 or A22? So when I say Aij, it tells us how much units of output of ith industry are used by jth industry as raw material, right? So A11 represents how much units of first industry are used by themselves. Similarly, A22 represents how much units of second industry are used by themselves. So I want both of them to use not all of their output, but less than one. So one represent the whole proportion, the 100% of their output. I want their input requirement for themselves to be strictly less than one, because this shouldn't happen that industry is producing 100 units. Whatever they produced, they used it again for themselves. That doesn't make them an industry. It's not going to fulfill consumer demand. It's not going to fulfill the demand of raw material for other industries, right? So that makes no sense. Whatever they are making, they are using it again to make something which they will further use. So it doesn't make any sense in an economy. So I want A11 and A22 strictly less than 1. This is the first Hawkins-Simon condition. After that, the second Hawkins-Simon condition is that the determinant of I minus A should be strictly positive. But why? What's the reason? So we are going to understand that reason. Just see. So what is the determinant? How do we find determinant of 2 by 2? Cross multiply them and subtract them. So the same I have done. So 1 minus A11, 1 minus A22, the diagonal elements minus the off diagonal. I want them to be positive. So I'm just multiplying them now. 1 into 1 is 1. 1 into minus A22 is this. Minus A11 into 1. And then minus and minus will be plus A11, A22. The same thing. What I have done is, I will be taking all these terms to the other side so that this inequality faces one on them, as you can see here. So what is going to happen? Now, if all of these terms are going there, A11 will become positive, A22 will become positive, this will become positive, but A11, A22 will become negative. So A11, then this term A12, A21. Now from this and this term, the third, second and the fourth term, I have taken A22 common. So if A22 I take common, what I will be left with? 1 minus A11. So this should be less than 1. Now what does it imply? The one thing which you have to observe here is, since A11 is less than 1, I know A22 is also strictly less than 1, but they are positive also. So they are numbers which are between 0 to 1. Right, 1 minus A11 is a number which is between 0 to 1 and A22, same way. When I multiply two numbers which are between 0 to 1, the product gets smaller. Correct? The product will get smaller. So it means this number is specially going to be very less than 1. Now, why are we discussing it? So there is one thing here. If you 
pay attention. Let's say if I have this thing 1.8 minus let's say 1.2. So what I'm going to get? I will get 0 0.6 which is less than 1. This is the first method to get a number less than 1. The another method is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2. This is also 0 0.6 which is less than 1. So either I subtract two numbers to get a number less than 1 or I add two numbers to get a number less than 1. So here I have to understand that which approach am I using so that I can get my desired result. Now I know this number is going to be very small between 0 to 1 and even closer to 0 because I am multiplying to very small numbers. So this is very small. Now these both are positive, a11 is positive, a12, a21 is positive. So they also cannot be negative. Ki if I say this is a negative number, this is a positive number. So if I do their difference, I will get a number less than 1. So it means this first option is not applicable here. Only we are going to use the second option. That is this number will also be less than 1. This will also be less than 1. And when I add them, I still get a number less than 1. So using the same approach, I know this is a small number using the same approach. Can I say now that a11 plus a12, a21 is going to be strictly less than 1? Yes, of course, I can say that. All right. I will write a11 plus a12, a21 strictly less than 1. What does it mean now? We have written it, but what does it mean? It means that a11 is the direct use of first industry's output by themselves as input. So this is the direct use of output as input. But when it comes to A12 and A21, what is this? This is the indirect use. Why this is known as indirect use? Because the first industry is giving their product to second. Now second industry uses that and they produce something which they further give to first. So eventually the first output is coming to first as input but in a different form. So this is the indirect use. This is direct and indirect. So the total of direct and indirect use of first industry's output as input should also be less than 1. So the second Hawkins-Simon condition tells us that the direct plus the indirect use of any commodity as an input should also be strictly less than one. So these were the two Hawkins-Simon conditions. I hope that you will find them useful. Please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel. Thank you everyone for watching this.